a major enemy offensive that penetrated our lines, and Corps withdrew to prepared positions in the rear. But all units were not able to withdraw. Company A, 1st Battle Group, 64th Infantry. They've been cut off. That is Captain Russell, the company commander. He's in a tough spot. Will he hold his position and fight, or break out and return to friendly areas? Evade by infiltration, or penetrate deeper into enemy territory and conduct guerrilla operations? Or will he combine any of these alternatives into a single plan of operation? As far as I can tell, we've been bypassed and cut off. I still haven't been able to contact battle group, and the last patrol I sent out reports the enemy in strength to our rear. They've got air superiority, so we can't expect immediate support or evacuation by air. I know the situation looks rough, but we're dug in astride the only major road in the area and in good position to delay enemy supplies. I've decided to stay here and fight. So he's going to stay and fight. It's a risk, but in this case, justifiable. Captain Russell's decision is based on many factors, including the accomplishment of his mission, his ability to assist other friendly forces, the probability of relief, the condition of his unit, equipment, and supplies, and the fierce determination of his men to resist. So warn your men not to waste any food, water, or ammunition. We'll probably get hit right after dark so be on the alert. Keep me informed on casualties and ammo. Winters, you're in the rear of the perimeter. I'm dependent on you to keep those people off our backs. Yes, sir. Any questions? Do we have contact with any friendly units at all, Captain? No, but a few stragglers from Bravo Company have reported their company was overrun. How about casualties? What are we gonna do with them? I've had the senior aid man set up an area in that draw to the rear of the CP. Have your aid men bring the seriously wounded down to him. He'll be protected from small arms fire there. Any other questions? One no. thing more. Be sure all your men are thoroughly briefed on this situation. I want each and every man to understand what's going on. This company has never been licked. Never. And it's not going to be licked now. Okay, move out. I'll be around to check with each of you later. For the next two days and nights, the enemy attacked furiously and relentlessly. But although outmanned and outgunned, the men of Company A would not be captured, would not be destroyed. On the morning of the third day, although battered, mauled, and wounded, the company was still in possession of Hill 310. Edwards? You okay? I'm okay, Sarge. Tough about Lucas. 
least he didn't know what hit him. I'll have a couple of men pick him up as soon as possible. How you fix the ammo? I've got seven clips, no grenades. What about Lucas? He's got nine clips, two grenades. Let's have him. All supplies, including food, weapons, and ammunition, must be taken from the dead. For the dead are dead, and the living must go on fighting. You keep those, I'll have the rifle picked up later. How you guys doing? Okay, Mitch. Mike, how much ammo you got left for that AR? I'm down to three magazines. Uh, here's a couple of full bandoliers. You better start reloading those empty magazines now. Yeah, thanks. How about you, Harrison? Four clips, no grenades. Just three more clips. And two grenades apiece. Make them count. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel now. Hey, Sarge. Any chance of getting a three-day pass? Sure. Tell the first sergeant I said it's OK. Say, Mike, if anything happens to me and you take over the squad, the lieutenant's putting Edwards in your slot. OK. And I got a hot news flash for you, Mitch. I don't want to be squad leader. So you keep your damn butt down, huh? What's the matter? No ambition? I'll see you later. You know, just having that guy around makes me feel better. A good fighting outfit means good leadership from top to bottom. Like all good leaders, Sergeant Levine has earned the respect of his men. No, we're never going to get out of this alive. What kind of crazy talk is that? You fluffing your lid or something, kid? We're almost all out of ammo. What are we going to do if they attack again? We're going to get captured for sure. Captured hell. Ain't nobody in this hole going to get captured. If we run out of ammo, we'll fight those cruds with our rifle butts. You can say that again, Dabrowski. Nobody in this whole company is going to be captured, kid. Don't worry, the old man knows what he's doing. We're gonna get out of this all right. What did I tell you, kid? You got much ammo left? We got nine clips between us. How about grenades? We're fresh out. This is all I can let you have. Make them count. Don't worry, we will. Won't we, kid? You're damn right we will. That's his stuff, kid. Lieutenant Briggs. Yes, sir. Got a cigarette? I wish I did. I smoked my last one a couple hours ago. Listen, I've just checked the positions and it looks bad. We haven't got enough ammunition to last another night. Yes, I know. I've decided to break the company up into small groups, order the men to infiltrate back to our lines. A leader must be flexible in his thinking. He must always be prepared to alter his plan of operation to meet changing conditions. With insufficient ammunition and no immediate relief in sight, Captain Russell can no longer hold Hill 310 without risking the capture or destruction of his company. That's why he is now going to employ the technique of evasion by infiltration. And I want you to take the necessary steps to destroy all equipment we can't take with us. 
Wait a minute. Bearcat 6. This is Bearcat 2. They're massing again. I think we're in for another attack. I'll be right up. Well, looks like we're going to get hit again. Go ahead with the plans I outlined. I'll be up at the OP. Yes, sir. Take it easy, kid. It won't last much longer. They'll be coming at us as soon as they lift this heavy stuff. Oh, I can hardly wait. Hang on, I'll let you know. Captain, two of the 81s have run out of ammunition. Tell McCleskey to get those two squads over to the 3rd platoon. Report to Lieutenant Hilliard. He can use some help. Yes, sir. Last bell, Pete. What do we do after this? We got pistols, ain't we? Last one, Gus. That's it, Sarge. Now what do we do? I'll find out. The line's dead. Well, there's, there's no suchness hanging around here. Let's go up on the hill and give our guides a hand, huh? Come on. This is an excellent example of initiative and aggressiveness, two of the most important factors of good leadership. Rather than stand by passively, waiting for something to develop, Sergeant Haley made his own decision to take aggressive action and lend what support he can to the men fighting on the hill. Overrun the company. Yeah, they'll be hitting us the same way any minute now. Does every man understand he's to hold his fire until I give the signal? Yes, sir. Here they come. It's just about close enough. Commence firing! Fire! captured a number of our men. They've stopped. They're pulling back. I don't get it. They could have taken this hill with no sweat at all. They're even pulling out of the company area. You're right. You better crank up a couple of men and get over there and take a look around. But be careful. Yes, sir. It is a 
an American soldier's duty to use every means within his power to escape if he is captured. The best time to escape is during the first minutes or hours of capture. For with each step the prisoner takes, he is moving farther and farther away from his own forces and closer and closer to the barbed wire, starvation, brutality, and very often to death in a prison camp. Nuts. Come on, get out of here. I couldn't make it, Mike. My head's killing me. Same here. My leg feels like a watermelon. Anyhow, you know Dabrowski. He'd never leave either one of us. This way, he's better off. Yeah. I wonder if Mitch made it. I sure hope so. Now, here's the scoop. The captain's dead. And there's nobody left alive in the main position. A number of our men have come in, and we know that a few have been captured. Now, for some reason, the enemy's pulled back off the hill. But they'll probably try to finish us off tonight or tomorrow. But we don't stand a chance here. So we'll break up into three- and four-man teams and work our way back to our own lines. Evasion by infiltration. The very same plan Captain Russell was considering before he was killed. It is one of the best means by which men in an isolated unit may get back to their own lines safely. Now, according to the map, our best bet would lie in this general direction. That'll give us two routes, one on either side of this ridge. Now, here's how we'll do it. Each squad will be organized into three groups, squad leaders, and fire team leaders in charge. Sergeants Patterson, Lonergan, Hughes, and I will split the remainder of the men between us. Lowry, the first squad will begin phasing out of its position at exactly 20, 30 hours, with five minute time intervals between groups. As squad leader, you lead out the last group. Vale, the second squad will begin phasing out at 20, 45 hours, with the same time intervals between groups. Now, the third squad will go the same way at 2100. Weapon squad at 2115. Now, remember, we'll all be traveling the same routes. So be careful in the dark. You don't want to 
fire on each other. So tell me, how many men did you leave behind? I don't know, sir. The enemy tries to gain information almost immediately after capture, even as far forward as the company command post. Here, the commander is primarily interested in tactical information of immediate importance to his own unit. But there is only one kind of information to give the enemy. My name is Edward Harrison. Private First Class. Serial number 1536121. I was born May 6th, 1931. Yes. Name, rank, service number, and date of birth. Nothing else. Yes, yes, have it your own way. We will find out what we want to know anyway. Good. This man goes to headquarters. Next prisoner. During our attack, your mortar fire stopped. What happened? I have no idea, sir. Did they run out of ammunition? I'm sorry, sir. I really don't know. My name is George Edwards, Private First Class. Serial number 14623175. Born January 31st, 1933. Etc., etc., etc. I know, I know. You will not talk. That is all right. It is not my job to make you talk. We have people at headquarters who will do that. Guard, take this one too. Next. Well, what have we here? A non-commissioned officer. 